Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god, guys. Oh my lord. I remember... I remember what I said in the last video with my review on Sony's E3 2014 press conference and saying that was the best E3 presentation from any company so far. Well, smite me, smite thee, because Nintendo's E3 2014 digital event was the best, and you can quote me on this, the best E3 presentation of this year. If I were to categorize this, it would be Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, Ubisoft, and then EA, because they just show conceptual art and bullshit, but... My lord, man. <laughs> it was like the shortest presentation that any of the big three console manufacturers had, like shorter than Sony and Microsoft's press conference, but it gets to the point, it's 46 minutes with like seconds ahead of it. Uh, it's just freaking hilarious, it gives you so much info, details on these games, and... It, it was just good. It was goddamn good, but yeah, so <laughs> the intro of this video would be done, and I'm going to be talking about my thoughts and opinions through the games or things they announced in this digital event in chronological order. So, let's go with the two intros or skits they had for the digital event. One was Reggie fils in robot chicken form, <laughs> and Owada and Reggie beating the shit out of each other, and then having a kind of moment. <laughs> that kind of moment. To promote the Miis for Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U, and the Amiibo Nintendo figures. But let me just go back to the skits, man. <laughs> I never thought I would see a ro robot chicken skits in the beginning and to the end of this event. And I really hope many companies, including Nintendo, continue on with this unprecedented partnership they can make. Because, man, <laughs> we have the most PC robot chicken skit that's funny as hell. It actually, like, <laughs> Nintendo actually makes fun of themselves through these robot chicken skits. It's like, oh, great, another Mario game. It's like, can you give a Mother 3 Reggie to, like, um, Bowser and Peach's interactions? Oh, and, um, like, the older Link going against Toon Link, being like, hey, they told me they wouldn't let you in. <laughs> or be there. That was just freaking hilarious. Man, that was beautiful. <laughs> and then even more beautiful was the Iwata versus Reggie fight. That's all I'm gonna say. You need to freaking see this if you have not seen it. But holy shit, man. The JoJo fucking videos from that... From that goddamn skit. That that was beautiful. But that was... Like, you know what? Fucking... They should put that as segments for the Super Smash Bros. Wii U commercial. Because that shit was sell, man. That That's out of the ordinary that you would never see for... In today's commercials... For video games, from what I've seen. But literally, it, it was a really good promotion to showcase the Miis for Super Smash Bros. Wii U. And the Amiibo figures for Smash Bros. and many other games. But the Miis, at first, from what I heard of them on Twitter, because I didn't even watch the digital event live in my seat <laughs> and computer... I heard, like, Miis confirmed for Smash Bros., but I didn't know if this was real or not, because I didn't see any images of these Mii characters for Smash Bros. until I watched the digital event. And at first, I despised the idea of Miis in Smash Bros., because, you know, I want to at least have one slot for a Nintendo character, or at least a third-party character, to take its place instead of a Mii character. But even then, how Sakurai and the team at Namco Bandai... No, Namco Bandai. Bandai Namco now. Um, Project Sora and Nintendo have done the Miis. You have, like, a, a melee fighter, you have a sword fighter, and you have a gun fighter. And they kind of look balanced, to be honest with you, and it would be... It would be really fun to see... <laughs> or see, it would be really fun to fight Adolf Hitler... Adolf Hitler me with Mario. That would be freaking hilarious. 
But yeah, the Miis aside, we then at least go for the Amiibo figures. And at first, and first impressions from a lot of people from what we heard, is these Amiibos would be sort of like Skylanders slash Disney Affinity figures, where we have to buy each figure, and these figures would be like the DLC characters in some sorts. But it's not like that. They have to at least clarify the Amiibos like after the digital event. But basically, Amiibos are basically sort of like harder training bots. Like, you basically... Like, if, if, uh, where is like an example? You know what? Fuck it. Let me take this example. Pretend this is an amiibo, right? This nice, you know, snow globe of Jack Skeleton, right? You put this, like, in that square corner of the Wii U gamepad. You put it there, and then the gamepad sort of downloads the data from the figure itself. And whatever happens, depending on what game it is, and they specifically said for Smash Brothers, um, detail attributes would sort of, like, go up when you sort of train these fighters, and they basically have, like, the entire full roster. Well, full roster of Nintendo characters. I haven't seen one for maybe Sonic and Pac-Man from what they announced, but I'm getting ahead of myself over Pac-Man. <laughs> but anyhow, the Amiibos, they look nice, and they got a lot of detail in them. I can't wait to get the Mario, the Luigi... The Little Mac, the Sonic, and the Mega Man figures themselves. And maybe the others, but overall, I want those five figures the most. But anyhow, the Amiibo feature will be not just for Super Smash Bros. Wii U, but it will also be for Mario Kart 8, which is the current Wii U game that is going to have this upcoming feature. Um... Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker, Mario Party 10, and Yoshi's Woolly World, or how I like to pronounce it, Wally World. Because <laughs> fuck it, I'd like to go for that. And many more games that they haven't announced yet for the NFC figures. They're going to be launching for, I believe Reggie said, the same day as Smash Bros. for the Wii U. But the NFC, like, reader for the Nintendo 3DS is going to come like next year so maybe the 3DS version of Smash Bros is going to have that feature as well but Christ I'm, I, I man I say so much details out of the games mentioned for Amiibo that I'm out of the game but yeah let me just hey man <laughs> going over it um they showcase like new footage for the epic Yoshi Yarn sort of game but it now has an official title, like I said earlier, Yoshi's Woolly World. And let me tell you something, that game looks beautiful as hell. It's got an art style, it's in 3D, it has like this cute aesthetic like an, uh, of like a yarn. And man, it's like Yoshi's Island, but with like Kirby's Epic Yarn. Then mixed with HD and, you know, 3D, because it's not like a 2D sort of yarn aesthetic that... Kirby's Epic Yarn had for the original Wii. And it's going to be released for like 20... Oh, no, wait, let me get out of my details. There's going to be like two-player co-op for this game. And, man, my brother and I are going to have so much fun with this. But anyhow, let me get back to what I was about to say. Um, Yoshi's Woolly World will be announced for our 2015 release date. So, so I'm going to at least be excited to get that game next year. And, um, as I mentioned earlier, alongside Yoshi's Woolly World is Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, which is basically Nintendo, like, making the mini-games from Super Mario 3D World, where you play as Captain Toad and you go through these 3D World-esque mini-puzzles to go from. And now Nintendo is basically making a full game out of these mini-games, so it really is nice to see something that I actually did like to play in Super Mario 3D World and to actually have it as a full game. Now, from what I got the details and information of Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, it's basically going to have a retail release and an eShop release. So it really is going to be fun because that box art for that Captain Toad deal, <laughs> it looks beautiful. And um, the game's release date will be for holiday 2014, so that'll be a nice game to get alongside Super Smash Bros. Wii U. And then... <laughs> that Zelda Wii U, though? That Zelda Wii U, though? Oh, my 
fucking god. <laughs> Man, um, Anuba, when he snapped his fingers, and then you saw that beautiful, beautiful-ass landscape with Link and his horse, and then just... Oh, lord, man. Wait, wait, let me, let me just... Let me just do a Banderas. <laughs> man, that, that was fucking beautiful, but anyhow... <laughs> Anumba basically sort of gone into detail being for this Wii U Zelda title would basically have the main focus being exploration and having an open non-linear world to do whatever you want. Basically, as everybody in the internet would put it, Skyrim, but made by Nintendo, and it's a Zelda game, a main Zelda game. So that's at least something to go by. And for what the graphics are... They sort of look like a mix of Wind Waker HD and Skyward Sword on the original Wii. And it looks beautiful as hell. And man, from what Anuba said that that was gameplay. Wait, wait, wait. I need another Banderas moment, man. God. Oh my lord, man. But anyhow, um, Zelda Wii U is going to at least have more information throughout the coming, like, weeks, months going by, and it's going to be coming at least what they state, a 2015 release. So, I just hope to God they don't delay it, man. I just can't. Man, I need to quench my thirst for Zelda, man. Thank God I got Wind Waker on that Wii U, thanks to Mario Kart 8. So, anyhow... Rumbling aside, they showed like a live-action trailer with gameplay segments of Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire for the Nintendo 3DS, and they showcased like the gym leaders, um, the redesigns of Kai, no, the Kai, the redesigns of Team Magma and Team, I believe Aqua. Don't make say I'm wrong in like the comment below if that's not the Blue Evil team's name again, because I kind of like. Oh, my head's a little bit spinny. <laughs> um, they showed, like, the mega evolutions of the three starter Pokemons for the Hoenn region, and then they showed, like, the mega evolution of Kyogre and Groudon, and man... <laughs> I need a fucking 3DS. Hey, oh, man, I... Ugh. Not full. <laughs> um, the um, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire is going to have a release on North America on November 21st in 2014. And I, don't quote me on this, but it might be the same day as that Halo, com no, the Halo Master Chief Collection for the Xbox One. Anyhow, I'm going off topic for Xbox One. <laughs> um, they showed a new trailer for the Action Pack Bayonetta 2. Looks beautiful as hell, man. Oh, I'm going off top. <laughs> if they, I I like to see that footage that they showed for that new Bayonetta 2 trailer in 60 frames per second because I got I need a jizz on that man. <laughs> that that oh, oh. Ooh. but yeah. <laughs> um, alongside the Bayonetta 2 trailer with gameplay segments in it. They released a Megatron bomb with Bayonetta 2, being that they're going to pack in the original Bayonetta 1 from like the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3, and it will also include Inspire costumes from Nintendo franchises, being Mario, Metroid, and The Legend of Zelda, so you get to dress Bayonetta as Peach, Link, for whatever reason they didn't put Zelda, but, you know, I can deal with that Rule 34 of Link, though. <laughs> and um, Sam as Aaron. That's at least something. And the game will also have some bits like the coins from Mario and the rupees from Zelda. So, I just can't wait for that. And that's just a freaking deal. You get to have two games in one, and that one game is going to be 1080p, 60 frames per second. I hope it is. And um, they're going to pack in a new game within the, this franchise. And it will have some aesthetics from the first game. So that's new aesthetics added into the new game. So that's at least something. So Bayonetta 2 will be having a release sometime in October 2014. For that Wii U. <laughs> um, they showed like more details from the Zelda slash Dynasty Warriors crossover title that Tecmo Koei and Nintendo are doing. 
Hyrule Warriors, they release um, Zelda and her, you know, mechanics with her bow, and um, Minda from Twilight Princess, she looks fantastic as hell with her moves in the hand, and... That might, that might be the only Dynasty Warriors game that I will buy in full retail. That's how it might be. I don't give a fuck what any of you want to put as Zelda skin Dynasty Warriors. I don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> That's just something. And um, the Hyrule Warriors will release on September 26th for the Nintendo Wii U this year. Um, and they released... Well, they should be released. Um, they showed um, a trailer for Kirby's Rainbow Curse being a sequel to the Nintendo DS game Kirby's Canvas Curse, which will basically sort of have the same navigational controls as the DS title, but you're going to use the Wii U gamepad and you get to draw rainbow lines and maneuver Kirby as like a ball throughout the levels as Canvas Curve. And, you know, I was hype, 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 but then it got, went down for Rainbow Curse, because, you know, I'm just biased for wanting a full 3D Kirby game. I just want that shit. <laughs> but anyhow, it's going to be released sometime within 2015. Might be a digital title. I'd be surprised if it releases in retail. But if it is released in retail, that thing better be 30 to $40. Just saying. Um, they showed a trailer for Monolith Soft's X, which is now have an official title, Xenoblade Chronicle X. And, you know, there's some details of the characters, you know, not quite looking that good, but the mechs, they look nice in their details, and the world does as well. And, I just jit myself when I see that freaking, when I see those freaking mechs, man. But, yeah, um, Xenoblade Chronicles X will be releasing sometime within 2015, so that's another ass game that I am definitely going to play on that Wii U. Um... Ooh. They go out of it. <laughs> um, they showed a trailer for like the leaked Mario Kart, Mar Mario Kart, Mario Maker for the Nintendo Wii U. You basically can make Mario levels like from the original Super Mario Brothers on the NES and new Super Mario Brothers for like I think the DS or at least the Wii version of it. You know, you can make your own levels out of that, and it's gonna be fun as hell to. <laughs> make my Mario levels and make the troll ones. <laughs> All uh, um, the original Super Mario Brothers too. Um, they didn't release any release dates for Mario Maker, so at least expect that in upcoming Nintendo Directs or maybe if they show a release date for the Treehouse live streams that they've been doing. Um, the And they sort of left... Um, no, it's left. They showcase, like, this new IP for the Nintendo Wii U using, like, the Wii U gamepad, and that is Splatoon, and it's basically a unique and, dare I say it, innovative third-person shooter by Nintendo. It's basically, like, Nintendo's version of Team Fortress 2, but, like, four-on-four, four, and it's a third-person shooter, and instead of shooting your enemies and getting all these kill streaks and high scores and that headshots or whatever, you basically use, like, these paintballs. You shoot, like, the environment, and there's basically, like, this percentage of, like, Team 1 needs to have, like, this amount of paint in the environment, and Team 2 needs to have this amount like, over the other teams itself, and you're basically like, that. you're, ugh, ugh. <laughs> you're basically like, like, ugh, again, <laughs> you're basically like these squid girls, that basically when you make paint on the ground, you basically turn into a squid, and you maneuver, like, on the environment, turn back into, like, the, a girl, and then shoot, like, the paint again in order to complete the objective. Man, I just said that right now, like, if I'm on fucking drugs. <laughs> and that drug may be the Nintendo drug. But anyhow, um, they didn't release any dates for Splatoon. But I've been seeing, like, some streams of Splatoon from the Nintendo Treehouse event. Treehouse event. Treehouse live streams. And that game looks fun as hell. I can't wait to play that. That's, like... Another third-person shooter that might be worthwhile to look. And and at the end, 
of this digital event. Miyamoto teased like the leaked Star Fox Wii U. Yeah, ooh, <coughs> no shit. Like Miyamoto like teased like the leak super, super Star Fox for the Nintendo Wii U, and he basically just like went over. Wait, let me get the controller. He basically went like this all over like the TV, and he was like, "Oh hey, I'm Miyamoto." <laughs> And he didn't specifically go into detail in the game, it was just basically a tease. But we all knew. We all knew from the leak we saw earlier that day of the digital event. That was fucking Star Fox, and it's coming for the Wii U. And man, when I saw that leak before that digital event, I said to myself, Nintendo 1E3. But then, as a wrap-up for the digital event... Seeing the skits from Robot Chicken, seeing that Reggie vs. the Water fight, and then seeing, like, all of those Wii U games that I am actually interested in, actually want to play and buy, which is very rare for a presentation, conference or not, it's very rare that I'm actually excited for everything they showed. That's a testament to what Nintendo had to show for this year's E3. These are games that I want to play, these are games that I want to buy, and you shut up, take the money. <laughs> and that's basically what it be. But I don't want to end this video because there is like more details they showed. And this wasn't like announced through like the live streams or whatever, but through Nintendo's Twitter account. And basically, uh, Miyamoto is working on two new IPs for the Wii U. And they basically have projects in their name. Oh, no, not projects. One of them having a project name. And that would be, um, what would it be? Um, Project Guard. And this is basically like a tower defense light game where you're basically in a, a prison in the moon or whatever. And there's like these ba a bunch of robots. Some of them looking like Rob, the robot. And there's like 12 cameras like on the TV. And... Oh, man. Um, there's, like, you can control them and shoot lasers at the upcoming robots to destroy them, and the game is intended to be played with people around you to at least help you monitor the many cameras around the base, but let's be honest here. It'll be, like, a hardcore challenge to do it by yourself, and, man, I can't wait to at least have more details for Project Guard. Um, the other new IP Miyamoto is working on is Giant Robot, which is basically, like, if you were... Like this giant robot, God's, well it's not Mega Godzilla, but it's sort of like Godzilla size robot towering against like this city. And you use the Wii U gamepad to maneuver around and destroy the city and stuff. You, you know, oh, let me take an example. Um, let me get over here. Um, pretend this is a gamepad. <laughs> um, like you would put like an example of the gamepad like close to your chest. <laughs> like you put the thing close to your chest, um, mimicking like sort of how the robot does, using the motion sensors in the torso, moving about, and the two analog sticks and the gamepad controls the robot's arms and allows you to attack like the buildings and the people and stuff like that. But it's sort of described by Miyamoto or Nintendo as sumo wrestling but with giant robots, and with and it's gonna like feature custom mechs. But if they're going to make this like a sumo wrestling game, it might just be online play for the game or, and I hope to God it is, um, second Game Pass support for like one Wii U. So I can't wait for if it is something like that. So yeah, two projects, new IPs Miyamoto is working on that is going to use the Game Pass to its advantage. And um, Mario Kart 10 announced, which is meh. <laughs> They brought the fucking car, I'm not interested, fuck that. <laughs> Might be one of those Wii U exclusive that I'm not going to give a fuck about. Nope. Fuck Mario Kart 10, nope. <laughs> and um, last is Devil's Third, which is basically like the new IP that Tomino Edigari, Edig uh, Edigaki is making, that he's basically been developing since... Since, like, the days of THQ being alive and stuff like that, but, like, you know, from what he said in, in an interview, that um, Nintendo basically came to him, or, like, Itagaki came to Nintendo, Nintendo listened, and they basically got a hold of the publishing rights for Devil's Third, and they're releasing the game for the Nintendo Wii U, which is gonna... Which is gonna, like, release... 
I don't know if they, it's releasing this year or next year, but overall, I can't wait to play this game. And from the trailer it is, I don't give a fuck if the game looks last gen or how people quote it as a PS2 game. Because let me tell you something, that shit is not a fucking PS2 game. I'll show you the worst looking PS2 games and the best looking PS2 games, but Devil's Third is not a freaking PS2 game. Anyhow, I'm off topic. <laughs> um, Devil's Third, I can't wait for this action game, melee, long range shooting game from Itagaki himself. And just can't wait. Anyhow, overall, Nintendo's digital event is the best presentation of this year's Nintendo E3. And that's about it. See you later.